So our next speaker of the day is Douglas Simões, our local expert from Pure Brazil. Douglas has a very interesting story about how we can give something back to the communities we work with. For many years, Douglas has worked on a partnership with the leaders of the favela Pereira da Silva in Rio de Janeiro. Douglas is going to present his lessons from a real favela's collective leadership. Dear Douglas, please welcome. Hi, Daniel. Hi, everybody. So thanks uh, very much for uh, the invitation to be here to talk about Mohinho Project. Uh, I will share my screen. So let me see if I can do that. Yes. So I will talk uh, here today about Mohinho that basically is the history, is the story of uh, 10 young artists. Actually today, not that young anymore, but um, that uh, started this project at Favela Pereira da Silva. Uh, so let's talk first about the favela itself. Most of the time, uh, favela in people's mind means a place with no structure, with violence and poverty. Uh, but when you go deeper in the favela, we can see much more than that. And what we've seen in these years, together with these, these young artists and the community that is there, it's resilience, creativity, <clears throat> opportunity, learning, and art. And in the case of Favela Pereira da Silva, we can even see great views, as we can see in the top left um, picture. But then, how we our story merge with their story? Um, we, in 19, uh, sorry, first of all, what's Mohinho then, okay? Uh, Mohinho started when a, film, a filmmaker uh, was visiting the favela in 1997. And this guy found some kids uh, were, uh, playing with toys with uh, a model that was made by them with bricks and left behind construction items uh, to create the atmosphere, to create um, the, the favela itself in a small scale. So we could see in these models, uh, bars, shops, restaurants and everything. But when he got these images, uh, this, this filmmaker, and took to a TV show, these um, young artists, they start to be invited to exhibit their art uh, on the following years in other places of Brazil, but also in other places of the world. And they could become a very positive uh, um, influence in the favela for the younger kids. So these artists, they've been in several countries, so including England, Spain, France, US, East Timor, exhibiting their art. Then in 2007, we were looking as a company to a place where we could show this side of Rio de Janeiro, but not as a bad place as with, without infrastructure, but as a place of solutions and opportunities. And they were looking for someone uh, or, or looking for a way to show their, their community, to show their favela, um, but not only to take their art to other places, but to bring visitors to their favela. So that's how we started together with them to bring tourists. And nowadays, actually, now they have stopped for the COVID, but this year they are opening again with all the protocols necessary. They started to receive visitors, not only from our company, but from any company or anyone who can visit, who can contact them direct and do it. Uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we just realized that for places like a favela, this is just another crisis. They have crises like that every day. While myself and probably most of this audience, this is the crisis for us because this is something unique. We never heard, we never faced something like that. But people in the favela, they are resilient every day. They need to do that because that's part of their life. Uh, just at the beginning of the, the COVID-19 problem, they could create with other NGOs around them 
and other communities a donation campaign that was made really quick with horizontal decisions and trust in each other, and they could help with basic items, food, hygiene and protection kits, lots of people from these communities. On a second moment, we, together with them, we created a, um, a campaign that we called I Support Mohinho Project. The idea was to keep the artists, keep doing their art. The idea was to sell, as Remote Election America bought one, uh, bricks, virtual bricks that would be placed at the model that they've got there. So who don't, who make the donations now, they've got their names or their company names on their model, which is there. So because of this resilience, these organizations, this innovation and everything that it happens in the favela, the numbers on the favela on COVID-19 are really low. So until now, with 10,000 people living there, they had only three cases and no death at all. So along these 13 years that we are connected with them, we learned a lot and it's really important for how we manage the company right now. First of all, we learned that we need to act more and complain less. Favelas, most of the time, they are forgotten by the government. So they need to sort out their own problems. And Mohinho is one a good example of that. The second thing is that in our lives, simple decisions can take months to be made on planning, meetings, calls, and things like that. On the favela, they have a problem to solve one each other uh, one after the other so they need to do things very quick so that's the way that we should do also in our company and the 400 square meters model that is being shaped that is being shaped by continuous contribution there is no a big plan for that you know so they just built up parts of it that was in the beginning and that is now it's right nowadays so it makes us to understand that a process is a combination of actions. So if each one do each, your part of it, you can have the full process together. So just to leave a last message for, for this, just as in business or life, each brick we place in the model is an important part of the whole thing. So thank you very much. So much, Douglas. It's great to see how much we can learn and help when working with the communities we visit while we are traveling. Mm -hmm.